Here we go, Barbie day one. Greta definitely loved, you know, a lot of technical and musicals um, were a reference for this film, but also a lot of just old, old movies were a reference to this film and they had this kind of, I mean, they also were shooting on different kind of film stock, of course that helps, but this like, like full coverage, but creaminess to their makeup, it was, that was, yeah, it was um, just a different kind of look, I guess, for what's popular right now, but very, very beautiful, especially on screen. Margot is, she's wearing all the hats, literally and figuratively. She wears so many hats and, uh, you know, she's like able to do anything and up for everything and it's an incredible thing to watch what she's done with this film. <laughs> the original Ken. Our kind of like foundation to build off was the Mattel line and so when it comes to costumes, the idea that you get a Barbie in a pack and you get all the accessories and all the matching ex like pieces of the outfit that go together or in some cases that can be converted from day to night. Um, you know, we'd take that idea and run with it um, where Jacqueline would create like a perfect day look but then when Barbie goes to the beach, it's the same material but a different outfit. Um, and her hair could change impossibly from you know minute to minute. She can go to the beach with a long ponytail and then have hair up to here for lunchtime and then have it curly by dinner and that was just kind of like the magic of Barbie Land is that her hair could change um, at, at, with, with her outfits. The costumes are, are in a way everything. I mean, it's, unless, you're we unless you're dressed for it, you're not doing it. So much about the doing is what you're wearing. And I, 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 I know I've never had as many costume changes as this and they're all so wildly different. And it's just the kind of, there's a meme out right now that says, uh, you know, the, the, the costume designer for Barbie has a free pass to heaven. And I, I agree. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Hold my ice cream, Ken. You got Ken Shooty, you got Ken Scott, you know, Ken Kingsley. Uh, Ken Simu, there's Alan, Michael Sarah, and how are they Ken? They're just, you know, they're Kenning, they're Kenning all over the place. They're Kenning all over each other. <laughs> they're Kenning everywhere. And they're Kenning so hard that they're gonna Ken themselves blind if they don't stop Kenning. <laughs> What Mark Ronson has done with the music in this film is unbelievable. Music's always that really fun thing that usually you, it's kind of like icing the cake. You make the cake and then at the end you're like, ooh, it gets even better when we ice it. Um, but that that is that doesn't even begin to cover what Mark Ronson's done. And he didn't come at the end to ice the cake. He's been a part of the process from the beginning. Um, and it's so important. That, that, that's made the biggest difference is having the music kind of grow and evolve whilst the film grew and evolved. The music is responding to what's happening on screen. I mean, there's like this hilarious song at the beginning when Barbie's going through her perfect day and then her bad day. Um, and Lizzo's lyrics are very much reflecting what you're seeing on screen. And it's, it's just this added layer of comedy um, and this extra conversation that's happening with the audience that's so funny. And it's an incredibly catchy, amazing song. You know, the Billie Eilish song at the end of the movie it made me cry the very first time I heard it. I still cry. I just watched a video of the, you know, the orchestra, an actual orchestra playing the score, which makes me happy that that still happens in movies. You know, a real whole orchestra gets together and plays a movie score and they record it and they put it in. Not everything's done on computers. Um, but to hear Billie Eilish's song played by an orchestra and every, half the orchestra turned up wearing pink and no one even told them to. They just did it because they wanted to. It, that, that made me cry as well. It was, yeah, there's been a lot of emotional moments on this movie, unexpectedly emotional moments. The film is so many things, but it's, 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 it's really funny. It shows you in a way how to kind of laugh at yourself. It's so, it's so without judgment. It's a very like in inclusive, kind of joyful experience, you know, and it's hella fun. Yeah.
Noah, welcome to iHollywood TV. Well, I sent my correspondent Melissa Hardy to the Malibu Barbie Cafe in New York City to see how well the fans know Barbie for a chance to win movie tickets. Yes, movie tickets to see Barbie and the Barbie swag in our segment of Barbie Pop Quiz Trivia. And here's what happened. Take a look. I'm Melissa with iHollywood TV. Can you tell me your name and where you're from? Yes, my name is Willette and I'm from New York. Well, so nice to meet you. And we're gonna play a little Barbie trivia game. The rules are there are four questions. Hopefully you get all four correct. You win a prize. If you get three, you win a prize. If you only get two right, I'm gonna give you a bonus question to bump you back up so you can win. Okay, sound good to you? All right, let's play. What is Ken's full name? Not a lot's known about this Ken character, right? Is it Kenneth Handler, Kenneth Jones, or Kenneth Smith? Oh my gosh. Um, Kenneth Handler? Yes! Yay! Woohoo! What is your name, sweetheart? Daniel Powell. And honey, how old are you? Four. And where are you from? From New York. Fill in the blank. A Barbie is sold every three seconds? Two seconds or five seconds? Um, I'm gonna say three seconds. Oh my god, that was incredible! Yes, you got it right! Yay! Yes, yes. Okay, what is Barbie's signature color? Is it pink, blue, or green? Pink. Yay! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! Barbie is 64 years of age. Multiple choice. How old is Ken? Is he 61, 63, or 62? 62? Oh my god, yes, you got it right. What toy company created Barbie? Mattel. Yay! Woohoo! All right, last question, and I think you're gonna get a prize because you're gonna get this right. True or false? Will Ferrell is playing the CEO of Mattel in the upcoming Barbie movie. I believe true. Yes, it's true. Congratulations, you won. Here you go. There's some Barbie socks. Who is Barbie's boyfriend? Ken. Hey, Ken. Woohoo! What was Barbie's first job? A nurse, an astronaut, or a fashion model? A fashion model? Yes. Oh my God, this is incredible. All right, true or false, the original Barbie was wearing a black and white bathing suit, a striped black and white bathing suit, the original Barbie. True. Yay! I'm happy to tell you it's a ticket to the Barbie movie. Hey! Here's your prize, you get some Barbie socks. You have a Barbie poster. It's a Barbie top. Barbie was inspired by a German risque doll named Lily. Is this true or false? Think about that one for a moment. True? Yes! Yeah. Oh! You won a ticket to the Barbie movie! for me to try the Barbie inspired menu. I ordered quite a bit. I ordered the California Dreaming Club sandwich with salad. I didn't even know I was getting a salad. The candied bacon that looks absolutely, oh my God, that smells heavenly. And some delicious French fries. And a think pink margarita. So here goes. First I'm starting with a little bit of the drink. Wow. That's the Think Pink Margarita. I think that's not a mocktail. I think that's very, very good. After a long day, I like it. 
And here, guys, is the California Dreamin' Sandwich. Mm. Mm. 10 out of 10. I am dreaming after that California dream, and I absolutely love it. Now let's try some fries. I love french fries. The candied bacon, a little more challenging. I'll take a little piece. Mmm, very sweet, really good. Hey, it's No, and welcome to iHollywood TV. Well, today we're going to share with you what it actually takes to make Barbie Land come to life with the cast and crew from the movie Barbie is Coming to Theaters on July 21st. So be sure to go get your tickets right now. And here's a look inside the movie. Enjoy. Barbie day one. If you were a little girl who knew about Barbie, who liked Barbie, there was a memory of looking at her behind the box in a toy display. Like at the to for me, it was Toys R Us. And that feeling of wanting everything inside of the box and all of the, her little, her shoes and her hair to be perfect, everything just so, and I think kind of keeping that fantasy in the forefront of my mind and, and thinking about how just little girls all over the world felt the same way I did. The best thing about Barbie Land is the Barbies are in charge. So we do everything. Um, and the Kens are there. We, we allow them in Barbie Land, but they're mainly just there as support to us. Um, and they're there when we need them. We like having them around, but we are the boss. You know, in the instances where we were just seeing tons and tons of tape, being like, okay, who could be right? Who could be right? Sharon Rooney and Hari, they were the first two Barbies, I think, that we were like, oh, they're perfect. Hari's tape was so funny. She just had the rhythm down. She had that quick wit. It was so funny. I'd actually been a fan of Hari Nets for years, uh, ever since Assassination Nation, actually film she did years ago with Sam Levinson. So I'd been kind of tracking her career for a while and when her tape came in, I was like, oh, I hope it's good. And it was amazing. Um, and Sharon as well just immediately had the perfect vibe, Barbie Sharon. And she's just like this gorgeous skin and beautiful, of course. And she's just funny, so funny, but very, very kind at the same time. My first kind of meeting about the film was with Jacqueline Duran, the legendary iconic, groundbreaking costume designer. And she told me that Barbie Hari, my Barbie, was unofficially fashion Barbie. So I was thinking like, okay, like who's, whose Barbie is, who, who owns the Barbie who is always just like perfectly done, taking it to the next level, no other Barbies have that look. And I decided that the person who owned my Barbie was not a child at all. It's like a 38 year old gay guy who lives alone in the West Village who like has four friends and invites them all over at a salon every week on Friday nights. And every night, every one of those Friday nights, he brings me out in my new outfit to share with his four friends. And I just sit there perfect in my box for the rest of the week. Come into my weird house, hi. I'm Weird Barbie, I am in the splits, I have a funky haircut and I smell like basement. Greta is making the Barbie movie perfect wonderful and my agent called and was like there is a role and the role is of weird barbie and i was like okay <laughs> i'm home i have to i have to have it because if you asked me to pick a role for myself it would be weird barbie and um I wouldn't quite know what that would mean, but it would apparent it would mean this, and so I'm so happy, so beyond happy to be here. When I was growing up, I was a huge, huge fan of Barbie. I inherited some from my sisters, so I had, I think, almost 30 Barbies, not to brag. And I also had my very own Barbie car, the pink Cadillac. I got it for Christmas when I was six years old, and I posed by the Christmas tree holding my Barbie Cadillac, and. I had a Barbie called Sparkle Eyes Barbie, and when I showed Jacqueline Duran, the costume designer, she made me 
the exact dress Sparkle Eyes Barbie used to have, so I am literally dressed up as a Barbie that I owned as a little girl. Putting on this costume was so much fun. It really does make you, yeah, sort of feel like a little girl again, because this is not something you could ever wear in real life. Well, maybe some people could, but I don't think I could pull it off, but it's amazing, and you d it did just feel like a doll's a little doll's play costume sized up because I remember playing with the teeny tiny miniature version of this never thinking I'd get to wear it but look at me now. How come you're so amazing? <laughs> no comment! <laughs> no, seriously, no comment. President Barbie is different because her hair, I would say, fluctuates a lot. She might have a large afro wig, she might have a slinky curly wig, like texture changes. So her outfits change just as much as her hair does. To be able to be transformed into a Barbie, you know, hearing um, Ivana talk about like the eyes in particular and making sure that they felt doll-like and uh, talking to Dubemi, my makeup artist, about like making sure that that, that, uh, that was showcased and from that straight Barbie eyebrows to, you know, obviously the hair and the bigger the better. And I've never had big hair. First of all, it's heavy. Like my neck is kind of shooting back in this, but it's once you see it as a whole, you're just like, okay, yes, I believe that all of these women are dolls and all of these men are, are Ken's. Uh, and it really is, there's, there's such subtleties to becoming these Barbie dolls. The costumes are, are in a way everything. I mean, it's unless you're we unless you're dressed for it, you're not doing it. So much about the doing is what you're wearing. And I I I, I know I've never had as many costume changes as this. And they're all so wildly different. And it's just a kind of there's a meme out right now that says uh, you know the, the the costume designer for Barbie has a free pass to heaven. And I, I agree. So Ken Ryan is played by a uh, Canadian darling and sweetheart Ryan Gosling. And Ryan brings, I think, all of his his incredible skill set to to Barbie. I think it's I think it's used very, very well. Not to mention um, he's got he's got one of the most shredded Ken bods I've I've ever seen. In a, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen a real doll with that many abs, but uh, but here we are. There are all these Barbies and Kens, and they're all Barbie and Ken, but they're all, even though they're called Barbie and Ken, completely unique and have their own identi and identities and unique personalities. Um, and that's been one of the most exciting things for me about this movie and being a part of it was this cast and being around them and the energy. It's one of those movies where you just shoot a scene, shoot a take, and everybody just brings their themselves to it and their rhythm and the whole thing just feels like, you know, it, the movie's already there, you know, you kind of feel like you're already watching it. And you could just take any take and put that in the movie and, it, and it's gonna work. So it's been a really exciting group to be around. Barbie Anna is interesting because I have thought about well, who is Barbie Anna and I do feel she is assimilation of Anna and so I, I don't know I think the beautiful thing about Barbie Anna is she is from lots of places um, I have a very diverse background um, my mom's from the Philippines my father is a Jewish man and I was raised deeply in both cultures and I don't think that is a unique story to me I think there are many people walking around this world who uh, hold two cultures very richly in their lives and because they don't present one um, physically, phenotypically, they don't um, get to claim it. But it is actually extremely unique to them and a big part of their background. I think Barbie Anna represents those people um, and I feel emotional about it because I, as an actress, rarely get to be all the parts of myself. Um, but in this project, I'm allowed to have a seat at the table and represent even a sliver of that population of people that um, is not other, but is everything. I think that with Greta's approach, it was, it was a mixture of getting to know us as individual humans and then fusing that with what she saw for these various Barbies. Like, I'm Nobel Prize winning Barbie, and I'm a writer, and so what does that look like, and how do I bring myself to that? Um, and 
just really being specific and intentional on little things. Plus, what's great about working with Greta is she's down for the back and forth. She's not like, this is who you are, this is how I want it, go. You know, it's like, what do you think? And for a director to ask you what you think just means the world to an actor. And to trust us with these characters and to say, hey, I hired you to do the job and I actually want you to do it. I don't want you to be a doll. I want you to be who you see this doll as being. And um, it just, that just is like a great environment to work in. And say, see you on the Malibu beach. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's some light. Yeah, that goes. <laughs> <laughs> My heart exploded when I came onto this set for the first time. It was sort of so amazing that all of my sort of like girlish dreams that are often I think treated maybe with derision often um, have been treated so beautifully and made so wonderfully and um, it's a real kind of testament to Greta's vision that she's um, made such an amazingly wonderfully crafted film um, and certainly this will be my godfather I believe. To be able to write a film and to write characters that have never been done before is so great and so special. And I tend to watch films once, and I feel like Barbie will be one of those films that people watch again and again, because there's so much in it, and there's so much to unpack, and there are so many references, and then depending on whether you see it when you're 15, you, and you'll watch it when you're 13, like, oh, I didn't get that reference because I hadn't watched that, and it will just be, it will just keep reinventing itself, I think. I really think that, and I think that's the secret to a great piece of art, is its timelessness. Hey, Barbie. Yeah? Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. Pink is going to play a big part in this movie, and we tested Pink's extensively um, with Rodrigo at the beginning of the process, just to, we tested it on fabrics, on the walls, in all different ways just to see how the lighting was going to affect the different tones. Ultimately, we landed on a selection of pinks that would, be, would make up the environment, Barbie's environment, and we worked really closely together, Sarah Greenwood, Katie Spencer and myself, to, to line up our pinks to make sure that we were always going to coordinate in any set. They painted these, these samples of all these but the, different The pinks. samples started at what we what we now yeah. call millennium yeah. pink, which is like salmon Millennial pink, pink yeah. And they ranged all the way through, and there's some down to what we call Mattel pinks, which are very hard and bluey. And then somewhere in the middle was the sweet spot, which is all yeah. of this. But what, why that was so difficult, so there was this beautiful pinks, but then when you put mm. a pink next to another pink, that colour changed, and then you put a fabric next to that, that changed completely. Mm. Then of course you have to think of you know, all the skin tones, and, and it, it was a nightmare, and the lighting changed, the, I mean that's a, yeah. I mean Rodrigo in the pinks has yeah. been a... Poor, poor, all I can say is poor, poor, poor Rodrigo, Rodrigo, because you know, there's not one, there's no there's no natural skin tones mm. anywhere on any of these built sets because we're in this, this toy world mm. and and I know that, you know, I mean, you can't see it, but that lamppost has got some <laughs> white gaffer tape going down the side of it because the reflection of the lamppost, even on the skin tones, it just, mm. sh it just shows. So I think, you know, it's been a really challenging set to light, mm -hmm. um, but equally, it couldn't be any other color than no. pink. One of the great things about uh, these shoot days is we've we've had enough time to not only kind of make sure we have you know the the stuff on the written page down, but Greta's given a lot of us to uh, a, a chance to kind of improvise and encourages all of that. In fact, um, she's. I mean, her, her main thing is like, if you have something better, please, uh, I'll take it. She will do the off-camera voices <laughs> with the same vigor <laughs> as uh, an enthusiasm as the actor who, who maybe can't be there for whatever reason. Uh, and she, I think, genuinely is having so much fun um, watching all the actors do their thing that it, it's just, uh, you know, that's that's kind of rare. Usually, I mean, a, d a director can be somewhat detached and and just all about the shots and the schedule and like, got it, moving on. 
I've heard Greta so many times just say, please, can we just do one more? It's just so much fun. I just love watching it. Will is like, not that I've told him this, but he's definitely uh, an idol of mine. And I think for all of us here, you know, I, I grew up on all of his films. It's a complete dream come true again to be working with him. Um, I never thought that I would really get an opportunity to do that. So I just, for the first half of the, of shooting, I was trying to suppress my excitement and act professional. And now I'm just letting it all hang out. We really hope the movie is for everyone. You know, we think it's for women, we think it's for men, we, we think everyone will enjoy it. I think the comedy plays on so many different levels. You know, we've got, you know, jokes that will go over kids' heads. We've got adult humor. Um, we have sophisticated humor and we have crass humor. So, you know, we really think the movie will play a kind of across all spectrums. And, and then, you know, we want people to take away from the movie what they what they will. You know, some people will view this as just a big fun comedy and others will view it as a life story or an odyssey. So it really, you know, it is, you know, operating on many different levels. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. If I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Margot's great, she's a real leader and she, she's super focused and I've spent days watching her do really, really difficult coverage and just nailing every take and um, just, cr yeah, she, I, I, there was one scene in particular, I, I won't go into it, but I was really just stunned by her, like, commitment and, um, I was, yeah, and was really moved, like, by, by her choices and, uh, and yeah, like Ryan as well, I've, I've been a fan and, and, you know, a lot of Margot's work I've watched over the years and been like, yo, she can, she can really do it. She will have like a million and one people around. Sound is here, makeup is here, costume is here. Like everyone is around her and I'll watch, she is so in, she's so emotionally in the scene. It's incredible. I don't know how she does it, to be so present within the scene and then yet still able to like, be generous to everyone around her. And she's in all the scenes. And then at the end of the day, we'll go in, she's exec in this film. So then I has to go and do meetings and budget our salaries and but like and have to do that. And then on top of that, she's just the friendliest person like will be like, come into my trailer and like and hang out and chill out. And there's been times in the struggle where I've had a lot of anxiety and a lot of like imposter syndrome. Um, and just like a lot of anxiety. And Margot has just been so kind and generous and like really is like really there for us as well. Margot is just, she just illuminates the screen. Like just when you see her up there, it's sort of just like, God, you're perfect. And not in a way that's like, oh, that's Barbie, it's perfect. Like how people like w would think, which is what I initially think, thought, and obviously still do think, because she is. But man, she's just, she embodies this role and what it means, what, what this role is going to mean to a billion little girls and a billion women out there. And I think there's honestly no one better that could have, that, that, that should be playing this part. It's so fun to, um, to, to be in the Barbie Ken world. It's a, it's a very um, giddy and, and loud <laughs> world when all the Barbies and all the Kens are together. Um, I got to be in dance rehearsal with the Barbies, sort of just, I volunteered myself to be in dance rehearsals because there was, I'm not in the Barbie dance, but I but I learned the dance um, because I just wanted to be around them. And it's a fun, intoxicating energy that's just bright and, and giddy and, and full of love and girl power. You know, the best thing that you could get, I think, out of art is, is to be surprised. Um, and I think that when people go to see this movie, they are gonna be, they're, they're just gonna be like knocked out of their seat uh, because it's, it is, it's a complex movie with complex thoughts and ideas and themes and emotions and layers. And I think that um, people are just gonna go, wow. That is not what I expected in a Barbie movie. That is that is so much more than I could have ever have thought it would have been. And and I really do think it will be an iconic movie that will kind of like stand the test of time. And um, and, and I think it's the kind of movie that you could go back and see again and again and again. Um, you know, she she packs so much in this movie and and so many references to to other films and you know, that whole dancing number with Ryan and when he sings, I mean, it's just, 
it's just so good. It's so good. Well, this movie is going to be one of the biggest films of the year. So nice to see the cast and crew talk about how they created this amazing film. Be sure to go see Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Weird Barbie, Kate McKinnon, yes, and the rest of the amazing cast coming to theaters on July 21st. We'll have all the information appearing below so you can be directed to the official Barbie movie website. Thank you so much for watching on iHollywood TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.